Hello, SQL Bits. Um, welcome to this session on uh, AI on Edge. We'll talk about artificial intelligence and deep learning and, and predictive models, but in the context of edge computing, but we will discuss about that and explain you. Uh, just before the session starts, let us uh, um, let me introduce myself and then my co-speaker Jonathan will introduce uh, him, himself. So I'm Jean-Pierre Riel, I'm from France, so sorry for my uh, very, very uh, terrible uh, accent. Um, so I'm innovation director, so I deal with, with a topic uh, as um, like uh, like um, um, data IoT and also artificial intelligence, and I'm also uh, uh, involved in French community for four years. I'm a data platform MVP since 2008, and I'm very happy to discuss with you uh, about artificial intelligence and edge computing today. So, John, can you uh, can you uh, introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan Pacifico. Uh, I'm data and AI uh, developer at ASIO. I'm a former student at uh, Microsoft AI School uh, based in Paris, and I'm trained in Azure data and uh, machine learning solutions, and more broadly in uh, data science. Uh, this is my first session. It's a great event, so I'm very proud uh, to be here. Yes. Th th thank you, uh, thank you, John. And, and we work to, to uh, all together uh, at ASIO, a French, a French consultancy company. But it's not the purpose. Uh, let's go to uh, AI to talk about AI on edge. Um, and, and just before I start to, to this session, we want just to explain the, the, the context of uh, uh, the idea behind, behind the session. Uh, last year, in, in 2019, uh, we organized uh, in our company, a hackathon, uh, where uh, we uh, develop uh, a model called Happy Face, just to detect if people are happy or sad or angry or, 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 or fear, etc. So uh, we, we, we do that, that project with some students. Uh, it was very fun. And at the end, we, we had a, a pretty good model uh, that work on, on, um, on our PCs and uh, on our uh, applications. But the idea is to, uh, to, to, to bring that, that AI model on very, very small device. You have two on, on, on the screen. Uh, we call this device Happy Face and Masky. Uh, so it's Raspberry, but uh, uh, the idea is to go uh, uh, smaller and smaller on, on, uh, on, on very, very small device. So um, uh, in order to, to work in real time, we need to minimize and to put our, our deep learning model on edge computing. So we, we create this device and recently we, present, we have presented um, our last device called Masky. Uh, it's a, it's a, um, a deep learning model that detects if, if you wear a mask or if you don't wear a mask. Uh, it was uh, mandatory at, uh, in, in Lyon uh, at the CIDO event. Uh, so we have presented that device. So it ran on, on Raspberry with, uh, with a very small camera in real time and it, it uh, uh, make things like like uh, uh, change the color of uh, of the, the the LED ribbon. So, beside behind the, that, that, that session, uh, we want to explain all the the things we have to to think, uh, all the challenge we have to face, just to uh, put our uh, very simple. Uh, I know that, that that Jonathan is not uh, agree with me. It's not so simple to to make a happy face model, but uh, that that model that work very well. On, uh, on a PC to, to bring it on a small device. So it's the, the, the journey we, 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 we have um, um, we, we faced uh, during that and we will um, discuss about, uh, about that. So first of all, uh, ju just before um, going uh, deeper in artificial intelligence, just let me um, spend a few minutes to come back to, to some um, concept around uh, connected device Internet of Things, it's, uh, that's the, 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 the word uh, used for, for that, IoT. Um, I, I will say the, a lot in, in that session. Uh, and more precisely, uh, what we call edge computing. So, first of all, IoT. So, a few, few years ago, Satya Nadia, during um, various um, speech, 
uh, he he um, he had um, talk about um, ambient intelligence. So the idea is to put intelligence everywhere in applications, in devices, in the cloud, in the network, etc., etc. And the other fact um, um, be behind that is uh, the, the, um, the connected device, so the IoT, uh, that is more and more um, present in, in, in our world. So the idea is to, to combine intelligence and connected device. And if I say it uh, in other words, it's we have to put AI everywhere. And it's our job as data scientists, data engineer, AI specialist to um, make our AI or deep learning model or machine learning model to work everywhere. So it's the, 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 the purpose of the intelligent edge or intelligent connected devices. But what, what is exactly edge computing? Edge computing is just the middle between the cloud and the, uh, the devices. So it's the edge of the network and why edge computing? Just because we want to process things, to process data, to run our uh, predictions. Uh, the closest, uh, the closest um, of the device, uh, and not in the cloud. The analogy we can have is, for example, if I want to have a, a connected boiler, um, I don't want to send every milliseconds the temperature of the water to the cloud, and then the cloud process that, that data. Uh, with some machine, machine learning uh, uh, algorithm, and then just say, say oh, it's, uh, it's hot enough, so just switch, switch off the boiler and go back to, to the device. For that, we do that uh, for years and for years with mechanical component, but the idea is to have that thing directly done on the boiler. So that's the, the purpose of the edge computing. It's to make the decision, make the computation as close as possible as uh, of the of the device. Sometimes we talk about fog computing. What is fog computing? Uh, it's another term to, to say exactly the, the same thing, but uh, I use it to illustrate that the edge computing, the computation, uh, is not on the cloud, but it's not necessarily on the device. So most of the time we use especially in, in industry, for example, we use gateways. So gateway is something that is between the device and between the cloud that can take the compute, uh, for example, uh, in, in our case, to, uh, to make a prediction with, uh, with a machine learning uh, algorithm and just send, send it back to, uh, to the device. That, that's what we call edge. And the, the, the fog computing is just the analogy between the clouds uh, and the ground. So you have the fog that is a kind of cloud between uh, uh, the sky and, um, and, and the ground. So um, wherever is the gateway, we consider it uh, that it's at the edge of the network. So it, it uh, takes the, the, the computation. And it's important because depending on the, the, the power you need, uh, sometimes the device is uh, not, enough, um, not enough powerful to, uh, to, um, to manage the, 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 the computation. But we will uh, discuss about that during, during the session. Okay, so we have the definition of the edge computing. So we want to put the computation as close as possible as the device. Uh, it can be a Raspberry, but it can be just a very, very uh, little chip. So the next um, definition I want to, to bring you is the concept of devices, what, what we call um, exactly an edge device or a device. So let me just introduce two kinds of device. The first one is what we call light edge. So it's few uh, euros or few uh, dollars and it's low powers. It's a very, very small uh, chip, um, uh, chipset, sorry. Uh, so it, it's, it's a cheap chip for, for, for French like me. It's very difficult to, uh, uh, to say with the right, uh, the, the correct accent. Um, so it's what we call the light edge. Uh, traditionally, it's for a consumer device because we want it to be as small as possible, uh, for example. But in our world, in the IoT world and the, 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 the world of our customers, uh, uh, we consider also what we call EVH. 
what is EVH? Here I, I just make a, um, uh, put a picture of uh, a big NVIDIA uh, video card. Uh, so it costs thousands of, uh, of euros or, or dollars. For example, um, a, a P100, uh, it's a very big video, video card. Uh, it's, it's more than, than $1,000. Uh, uh, so you see the difference. Uh, but it, it, it provides you a high compute uh, performance uh, for, uh, for the, 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 the computing you, you need uh, for your application, for your AI model. So there's two kinds of, uh, of edge. Uh, it's not only very, very small device. But sometimes when people think about IoT, you see, for example, your smartphone, you have uh, everybody has a um, um, a smartphone in, in, in its pocket. So you see something very, very small, but sometimes edge computing, it's having, um, for example, uh, a server at the end, uh, at the, the back of the, uh, the, 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 the factory. So another way to, to, to make the, the, the difference between light versus EV uh, edge, for example, uh, so it's, it's a Microsoft consideration. So Microsoft things that uh, what we can call light uh, edge, it's, uh, for example, an intelligent camera like the Vision AI Dev Kit. Uh, it's a Qualcomm chipset uh, inside optimized for um, for custom vision, for, co for computer vision, sorry. Uh, it's the same with NVIDIA Jetson, Jetson Nano. And on the other side, uh, for example, Microsoft um, um, provide a device through your Azure portal, so you don't buy it on a, on a, at a reseller, you just uh, order it on your um, Azure portal. It's the Databox Edge, so it's a server, but it's, uh, it's uh, an Azure service. It just that come into your factory, you put it, and you have a lot of, of compute uh, po uh, of computational power to, uh, to make uh, all the things you, you have to do. So Light Edge versus EV Edge, then once you have chosen, uh, or it's maybe it's mandatory, it's not a choice, uh, between light versus, versus EV, you have to, to consider what kind of chipset you, you will compose your, um, your edge device. So you know, um, you know the CPU, everybody knows about GPU, but there's also other kind of, of chipset like TPU or FPGA. Um, and the idea is, uh, do I need a more uh, flexible and generic um, chipset to make the computation. For example, CPU is very, very great for uh, for some some computation like regression. Or do I need something that is very spe specialized? Uh, so it's the case of FPGA or um, TPU, that is an uh, ASIC uh, application specific. Um, uh, chip, chipset. Um, so the idea is uh, to have something very uh, um, dedicated to uh, to to um, to your model because we are talking about AI model, uh, but it's less generic. So it's uh, um, it's programmed, uh, it's designed for your uh, your uh, deep learning model. It's designed for your. Um, uh, your um, your device uh, for for your your use your use case. So you have to choose between different different type of chi of chipset. But the hardware it's not it's not the, the um, enough to to take in consideration. In the IoT world, you have two different um, you have some difference. You have two different uh, category. Uh, so I, I met. Uh, um, a very uh, uh, hard split between between uh, uh, both, but uh, you have the consumer world where you have uh, issue with the the battery, you have issue with the connectivity. Uh, sometimes you have uh, an operating system very poor. Uh, uh, iOS or Android are a, a very rich. Um, operating system, but sometimes um, it's not a, a, a smartphone. It's maybe it can be a, a very very small, very very small device. So you don't have a, a very rich operating system. And on the other side, uh, and mainly in the industry or in the, the smart city, smart building, so in the industry industrial world, uh, you have something that is um, most of the time. Um, always plugged in, so you have no problem with battery because you have power supply that is reli reliable. Uh, it 
you have uh, no connectivity problem because uh, you have, uh, for example, Ethernet or uh, um, the, the, the right network you, you, you need for in your factory. And you have uh, what we call the full-fledged full operating system. So it can be Linux, it can be uh, Windows IoT, it can be also Windows Server if you want. But you have something with a lot, a lot of, of features uh, inside. So you have to take it in consideration because it's important to run your um, your AI uh, model. So just to wrap up the the, um, the the situation with the IoT and what we call edge computing. So I have an AI model. Uh, let's talk about deep learning because it's the main purpose of, of, of that session. So I have a deep learning uh, model and I want to, to run it at the edge, so in a small device. Uh, uh, very cheap, uh, very small, uh, very uh, with uh, with small batteries. So I have all these challenges to uh, to face. So the power, the heat also, because uh, if you have, uh, um, for example, uh, for AI we use a lot of of CPU or GPU or TPU. So so there's a lot of heat uh, around the device. Uh, maybe it's uh, it, maybe it's offline. I have uh, issue with uh, have enough compute to make something real time, for example. And then, and it's the, the, the not the most important, but uh, uh, it's very important in, in the case of a, the, a project, is the, the scaling. You, you have to scale your, your solution. Uh, maybe you, it's not just one device, but it's maybe, maybe 1,000, 1 million of device. And the last thing, it's what we call the BOM, the bill of materials. Uh, it's very important because it's the, the purpose of your project. Imagine, you have uh, uh, you are um, um, you are fundraising uh, uh, for your your startup. You have a very very uh, good AI model, uh, but you need a, a one hundred dollar uh, chipset to run it uh, and uh, and a big uh, device to 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 run it. Maybe it's not the case of your um, project or of, of your startup. Maybe you need to uh, to minimize and to put it in something that is cheaper, uh, that is uh, le less expensive. So the bill of material is very, very important. So you have these challenges to face in your project of edge computing. And if you want to put some artificial intelligence on edge computing, you need to uh, to consider all of this in, uh, in your project. OK, so. I define the, um, the, um, the edge computing, but now let's focus on AI exactly. And I will uh, give the, 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 um, the speech to John. So John, uh, what is the, the, the specific things about AI on edge computing? Yes, uh, thank you, Jean-Pierre. Uh, to start, I'm going to, to give you some basics of how deep learning works and uh, what is exactly an AI model. Um, uh, yeah. In uh, on this diagram, you can see what a neural network looks like. You can see circles and lines connecting them. Um, the circles represent neurons. Uh, in fact, these neurons are parameters called weights. Uh, you can see the Ws uh, in blue. Uh, we have to update these weights and Updating these this weights uh, is the learning process. Here, uh, you see very few weights, but in reality, um, a neural network contains millions of these parameters arranged in successive layers. This is why we talk about deep learning, because there are a lot of layers of neurons. So, how the network is going to learn? I'm sure you, you know the, the principle. Basically, we take a data set uh, that we split into a training set and a test set. The training set on the, the left enters the, the network. The data, the data goes through the neurons, update them, and come out with predictions. These predictions are compared to the test set uh, to, check, to check if they are correct. If not, the process goes back and the weights are updated again, and so on, until the error rate called loss 
is minimal and uh, the precision called accuracy is maximal. Uh, then, when the loss function uh, is at its lowest point, the training is done. And that's it. That's the, the method to train an AI model. Um, once the model is trained, we do not, we do not modify the, the model anymore. We just have to save it and, uh, and to be uh, able to use it later. So, this is important to, to remember that an AI model is a matrix of millions of parameters called weights. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of giant combination that represents the, the reality of what we want to predict. And after the training, we use this model uh, on our edge devices. So we don't do any training on the edge devices. Uh, simply, it requires too much power to do it. Uh, even if today uh, this point is discussed uh, with the possibility of making a transfer learning, but uh, it's another story. Um, even on your PC, sometimes a training requires too many resources uh, to give you an idea uh, for the project Happy Face. Uh, we did our training on Azure Machine Learning with a powerful virtual machine. It took four hours uh, for the training uh, instead of three days on my PC. Uh, for sure, the, the cloud is a great invention. Uh, so we only use edge devices for inference. I mean, to run a model to obtain predictions. And it's already a very heavy process. Work on a low power device. Uh, it's, it runs fine, fine, sorry, on my PC. But how do I run it on my little Raspberry Pi? Uh, this device has no GPU. So uh, it's very hard to, to run a, a, a big neural network uh, and to do a deep learning. Concretely, I have to lighten my model while keeping its precision and its inference time. Uh, after all, uh, we can ask, uh, is it possible? But uh, uh, that was my challenge. Uh, thank you, uh, Jean-Pierre. No. In fact, there are solutions. Uh, I have three different solutions that I'm going to, to present to you. Uh, the first solution uh, is called pruning. Uh, pruning, uh, yes, it's like uh, what you do uh, in your garden. Uh, let's go back uh, to our matrix of parameters, millions of, of weights. Uh, this it is very easy to execute. Uh, the idea is to remove some parameters. Um, if we have less weights, the model is lighter, it can run faster. This is the, the idea. So we are going to prune, to I mean cut the parameters which have the least impact on the final result. I mean, we can remove uh, the, the weights that have the least importance on the predictions. And it is possible to do it with, uh, with algorithm, uh, especially with, uh, with TensorFlow and Keras, which offers the, the means to do it uh, with uh, its packages. Honestly, that remains a complex operation uh, because we, we must test the various arguments uh, called hyperparameters. Uh, it's a uh, long work, but uh, the, the results are amazing. As you can see, uh, we tested uh, the pruning on our custom uh, object detection model for Happy Face. Uh, initially, we had um, 61 million of parameters, and after pruning, we have less than 11 million parameters. Again, uh, absolutely uh, impressive. We have a gain in size and speed. 
while preserving, preserving uh, accuracy. Uh, and it was our goal. Uh, remember, accuracy is the precision of the model, is, uh, is almost equal. It's an impressive solution. So pruning was our first solution. Next, the second option is called quantization. Quantization is done in, in mathematics. Uh, first of all, let's go back to our AI model. What we can try now, well, maybe to play with the, the weights themselves. Um, I'm going to explain the, the, the principle. If each weight is encoded in 8 bits, we have 256 possible values. It is as much space reserved in memory. If we convert this parameter into 5 bits, we have now 30 possible values. Now, at the scale of a, a neural network, uh, imagine um, a thousand weights of 8 bits each are equal to 8,000 bits. So if we have a thousand parameters of five bits each, we only have 5,000 bits. Uh, thanks to the operation, we have a gain of 35% of memory. Uh, it's, a, it's a great gain. Uh, so let's see it in a, in a real contest. Commonly, values are encoded as float32. Quantization can convert them into integers. On the bottom line of this diagram, you can see the floats. Uh, you can see uh, the, the range of possibilities is very big. And I repeat, it is as much space reserved in memory. And for most use cases, this capacity is simply unnecessary. So we can convert the, we can convert them to save memory into integers 8. Uh, integers 8 is the maximum acceptable. Uh, beyond that, we lose the, the, the precision. So just like pruning, the, the results are also impressive. On a YOLO model, initially, we had a model with a size of 237 megabytes. After quantization, only 13 megabits. Uh, we can have a, an impressive, uh, impressive gain in memory at P2 while preserving the precision. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, pruning and uh, quantization are two techniques uh, uh, very, um, very impressive to, um, to lighten uh, our model. So, pruning and quantization um, uh, are first and second solution to optimize AI models for edge computing. Uh, when you look some constructor frameworks like the, the Xilinx one, you can see that they use these two methods to optimize the, their AI models. This is an example to show that these techniques are becoming popular uh, at the edge AI, in the edge AI field. And we have a third solution. We call it, we call it optimization software hardware. The, the main idea is if model optimization has uh, uh, quantization or pruning is not enough or not enough relevant. Uh, we can look on the side of hardware to speed up the, the execution of the model. You can take the, the example of the, the mobile technology. Uh, if you want to, to run your deep learning model on an iPhone, for example, you have to, to convert it in the core ML format to fully uh, benefit of the, the phone hardware. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, it represents uh, about um, 10 billions of transistors for an iPhone 10. So uh, 
it's a uh, it's giant, uh, and, and this is the the same thing on Android with TF Lite format running on smartphones and uh, using uh, their uh, neural chips. So we can retake this principle for another device, such as the, the, the Raspberry Pi, to which we can add an accelerator chip, uh, like a, a TPU chip. But uh, the conditions to do this are a little bit uh, complicated, because it is necessary to respect an alignment between the software and the hardware, from the, the training to the inference engine. For example, to train um, a TensorFlow uh, model, uh, it's a TensorFlow uh, .pb format, you have to use the TensorFlow framework. And if you want to run it on your Movidius uh, accelerator, uh, you can see it. <laughs> You must convert your PB model to uh, the OpenVINO format. See, this is the, the format uh, of uh, the, the framework, the SDK of uh, Intel. But what if, uh, if you want to run a Keras model on your Movidius chip? Well, you can't. You, can't. you have to convert your model to TensorFlow.pb. Uh, and sometimes it's, uh, it becomes a real puzzle. So uh, you, you have to, uh, to, to respect this alignment. Yes, the, 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 the idea behind, uh, behind this slide is um, you, sometimes you need to, to, to start with the hardware, like I said previously, with the, the bill of material, with the, the design, and then you need to choose the inference engine, then the model format, then the training framework to achieve that. Uh, but if you start with the training framework and, for example, you hire, uh, you, you have hired uh, three data scientists that just want to do some uh, PyTorch and they don't want to do uh, uh, other things, be careful because maybe the alignment isn't um, possible and maybe you cannot use uh, the, the chip you need uh, to respect your, your, your bill of materials. So you have to, to, to take in consideration all the stages of the, of the, of the, of the machine learning uh, um, life cycle from the training to, to the hardware. You have to align things. That, that's the, the, the idea behind this slide. And I, I just unphase on that because it's the, maybe the most important slide on, uh, on this presentation. Yes, absolutely, Jean-Pierre. Uh, and this uh, alignment uh, is sometimes uh, very uh, difficult, uh, more difficult than you can think. Uh, for example, uh, NVIDIA in, uh, in the, the developer kit documentation uh, put a disclaimer. Uh, only this combination of releases worked successfully. Uh, work for me, uh, the developer uh, uh, tested uh, uh, different combination and one combination really works. So, so uh, it, it looks like a, a joke. Um, it's a real problem. Um, fortunately, um, some companies aware of the problem have proposed uh, a solution. Uh, Microsoft and Facebook thus created Onyx to overcome this problem. Onyx offers interoperability between AI frameworks. Even better that, than that, sorry, it optimizes models for hardware directly. Quickly, many companies joined Onyx, whether in software or hardware. I think about Qualcomm and Intel. Uh, now, NVIDIA is, uh, is part of it, too. Uh, thanks to Onyx, for example, we can, train, we can train a model with PyTorch and use it with TensorFlow. Or directly, you can convert your PyTorch model to the Onyx format and run it 
uh, with a, a Qualcomm uh, hardware solution. And with this Onyx uh, runtime, you can uh, uh, you can run your, your model uh, faster, very faster. I made a, a benchmark to, to test it with uh, our project Appyface. And for our custom YOLO model, Onyx runs six times faster than Keras. It's, uh, this is impressive. Well, yeah, I'm a big fan uh, of uh, Onyx. Yes, just to make a, 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 another analogy uh, around Onyx, it, it's like a few years ago the HTML uh, that that was the the, uh, the things that that uh, when you specify that there's a title and uh, and which uh, a particular font a size etc. It's it's um, supposed to be the same on any browser vendor on any platform on any uh, uh, device so the idea is the same is uh, you you use uh, your ai framework to build your model then uh, when you uh, put it in the onyx format there's something that is in trip interpretable by any uh, cpu gpu uh, uh, asics uh, as far as the, the the hardware vendor just collaborate on the format and that's why sometimes it's it's faster just because uh, they optimize their 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 um, chipset uh, for the onyx format to run uh, a deep learning uh, model for for, for for example yes um, we can uh, we can see uh, the the web page of uh, onyx uh, with uh, the signification of the the, the acronym o o n and X Open Neural Network Exchange. Uh, yes, uh, we highly recommend uh, to use it uh, for Edge AI. It's uh, the key of the future, I, I think. <laughs> yes, and, and uh, uh, you see that it's about neural network. So it's uh, it's but it's a big part, and and a lot of of uh, of um, kind of model are neural network. So uh, it's it, the purpose. It's neural network. Yes. And last thing about uh, because it, it was the a screenshot of the the main page of the Onyx website. But if you go on the on, on the the, um, uh, the Microsoft uh, Git repository uh, about Onyx runtime, for example, you see that uh, you you see that alignment that we talk a few slides ago, a few minutes ago, uh, because you have to consider that uh, my uh, runtime must run on, for example, uh, uh, ARM uh, 32 bits uh, with uh, uh, an acceleration from uh, NVIDIA or Rockchip or, or whatever. And you see, you have to align that and sometimes some combination doesn't work. But the, the, the purpose of Onyx is that all the combination uh, work. And you can see also, uh, maybe I don't know if you see my, my, my mouse, but optimized training. So it's not the purpose of that session, but uh, like um, like um, uh, Jonathan uh, says a few minutes ago, um, a lot of people work on having training directly on the device. So it's training on edge computing or edge training, we, we can call, call that. It's not a purpose, but you see that it's something that is coming uh, mainly about uh, with, with the transfer learning uh, of, the, um, of the models. Okay, and just to, uh, to, to finish with that part of, uh, uh, of, of the session, it's to make uh, um, an analogy uh, between what we uh, try to explain to you and and uh, another uh, field, it's the video game market. So um, for years, and, and right now there's uh, um, there's still uh, a competition between the the um, the video game makers, the studio, and the hardware vendors. Uh, so the 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 the, the video card. Um, so with the, the, the GPU, for example, NVIDIA, I know there's uh, um, out of stock of the new RTX. Uh, it's a very um, expensive uh, um, video card, uh, video board, but uh, it's out of stock. So um, the hardware wants to make uh, things better and, and more powerful uh, version after version in order to make the studio 
able to uh, add some features, some um, having games more beautiful, etc., etc. Or maybe it's the the studios that uh, uh, make the, the the their code more and more. Um, uh, they need more and more power than the hardware vendor need to adapt their their offer. So whatever. Uh, which one is the first of uh, of the, the the topic? The idea is you have uh, one part of the answer on the hardware. You have another part of the answer in the the field of the engineers or the developers of uh, of video games. So it's the same. The last scientists need to understand that there's a lot of framework and it's just not a matter of choice. That I prefer PyTorch or I prefer Keras or I prefer something. Say. I need PyTorch because it's compatible with that uh, model format that can run on that inference runtime on that chipset. So the data scientists need to understand that they need to understand the hardware and, and the constraint they have in order before to uh, to to run to 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 start to begin the the, um, the development of, of a model and the uh, in in the other side uh, the um, the, uh, the hardware vendors work to um, uh, to be able to run anything uh, the in the, the easiest way on their uh, chipset because they want to 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 to, to sell their, their their chip so they need to be uh, uh, more compatible with 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 more and more uh, formats so it's a game between uh, both and uh, uh, like, like John I'm very happy about the Onyx initiative because it's something yes. that that is uh, with the uh, the developers world and the software excuse me the software world and the hardware world and they want to work together in order to have to have something that works We'll see if it takes years and years, like HTML, uh, to um, to run perfectly on every device. And and um, right now, it's not the, the the case for every website, for example. But but we have something that is very good with in in the the, the sit web uh, area. So we want the, the same uh, uh, end with with the Onyx format. And then just to finish, uh, just want to. Uh, to maybe um, open your mind or maybe there's another way uh, to, to deal with uh, that difference, be that alignment between hardware and software, it's the abstraction. A few years ago, there, there, there's the virtualization. And uh, as a developer, uh, a few years ago, uh, I don't care about on which server, on which, with, with each RAM, CPU, etc. my work, my, my code, my application will run because uh, all the servers, all the, the, the hardware was uh, virtualized. Uh, and right now we talk about containerization, but I will come back in a in, in few minutes. But maybe I can uh, just make my model and I don't care about uh, if it's optimized for a small device, uh, higher device, etc. Maybe there's an abstraction and it will run the same way in any, uh, any device. And we see that way, and that's why I talk about that way to you. It's just because um, the IoT vendor, uh, and we will talk about Azure, uh, Microsoft with Azure IoT, um, IoT stack, uh, create, uh, develop platforms in order to scale or to make uh, IoT very easy because you have to maintain and you cannot have uh, a developer behind each device that compile, uh, that build, sorry, that, that generate the right model for, uh, for any device. So you need to have something more generic just to, in order to scale uh, and to manage uh, the complexity of, of that. So you have plat IoT platforms. Uh, in the case of Microsoft, it's the Azure IoT and all that platform vendor have an edge module. So they have a solution to put any piece of code. Uh, it can be an application, it can be a function, it can be an AI model, uh, to put that piece of code and to run it on the edge as, um, uh, like Microsoft say, seamless, seamless. So very easy to put it from, from the cloud to uh, on-premise to, uh, to, to the edge. How does it work? It's easy because 
any piece of code is put in a container. So it runs with Docker, uh, but it's the, 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 the most used uh, uh, platform for, for, for container. For container. Uh, so everything is, is put on, on a container. And it's the same with your AI model. If you put it on a container, you have a small pieces of application, not just a small piece of code. It can be Python, it can be .NET Core, etc., etc., whatever. It's just a container for the, uh, the, the, the edge device. And then the, the IoT platform just put it on the device where you have a manifest that you say, oh, on that device, I want that container and that container and that container. Uh, they all work together and you put, a, you, you put that on, uh, on the device. And maybe that, that abstraction, because uh, I just write something that is, uh, that is Docker compatible. I don't care about hardware acceleration, about uh, um, 32 bits or 64 bits, about uh, things like that, because the idea of containerization is to abstract the device, to abstract the, the hardware. So maybe it's something that we can uh, imagine that, that can solve the, the issue uh, of the, 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 the challenge we faced when we want to put some artificial intelligence on, on uh, an IoT, um, um, yes, an IoT uh, edge, devi uh, edge device. So let's back to, uh, to, to, to the Happy Face uh, project. And uh, you, you see on, on that, uh, sorry for the quality of the, of, of the screenshot, but uh, uh, the idea is we, ha we have two models. We have an ima image classif classifier. So it's just a piece of code that load the model, that take the, the, the image and say, oh, it's happy, it's not happy. Or uh, the, the, the person wear a mask or uh, don't wear a mask. So it's an object detection. So you can see uh, a lot of people with different different emotion or, or different status about uh, about the mask. So we put that piece of code uh, uh, into a container and it just deployed automatically with the, the Azure IoT Edge on uh, the device. And then the image classifier just do the job and just uh, uh, send back uh, the status, the prediction, and then after you can do whatever. Maybe you 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 uh, ring a bell on, on the on the cloud uh, to say, oh, some somebody is unhappy, and also uh, uh, don't wear a, a, a mask. Uh, whatever, it's the the application that do that. But my uh, AI is just put on the device just because it's in uh, in in that kind of uh, of container. So um, we have two minutes to, to, to conclude that, uh, uh, that session and then we can discuss and have questions. So the takeaway and what is important for us to, 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 to give you uh, uh, insights is first design hardware. You can start with the AI uh, with your data scientists, but uh, the, the, the advice for you is uh, if you have a, a specific project, a specific business plan, business, uh, a specific startup um, around IoT with a specific device that uh, must be uh, um, uh, less than, uh, I don't know, uh, 30 uh, uh, euro or 30, uh, 30 dollars. So first design your hardware, choose your component, choose your chipset, and then, then, you will align software and, and choose the inference runtime uh, and, and choose your training framework and choose how you will um, train your model and, and create your AI prediction al algorithm. Then uh, you don't forget to optimize your model. So Jonathan uh, show us the pruning and quantization and you see that it's something that is more and more popular uh, um, in any chipset and any SDK, etc. But also try to optimize your model for a particular hardware SDK because Qualcomm chipset, Nvidia chipset, or Intel are not the same, and sometimes they provide something that will help you to have the, the, the best performance on their uh, chipset. <coughs> and then I'm not conclusive about. Uh, if containers are a good way or bad way, uh, but you have to consider it because if you in your in your business plan you need to scale, you need to uh, to have an IoT platform. Maybe you have to consider the containers. But currently we, we are working um, with uh, with containers uh, because we are uh, making. Um, 
um, a full toolkit to create a model and to put it on, on the edge. And regarding containers, we have some issues because even if there's some abstraction, we have issues with with the the, um, the architecture, the, the hardware architecture, and, and things like that. So it's not so magic, but think about it because in in few years maybe there's no question about container and everybody will run on container and it's the container itself that will optimize the uh, the computation okay so i think it's the last slide and we are just in time for the end of the session maybe john you want to say a last word uh no i would like to 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 thank you jean pierre and uh thank you to, to um all at um organization uh uh, I'm uh, very happy to to be here today. So, okay, okay. It was, so, it was great. Yes. Yeah, so thank you, Jonathan, and and thank you to 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 follow that session uh, to the end. So bye bye. Bye.